In the Texas Hill Country, tucked along a winding river, sits a town that's much bigger in legend than in size, but a town that all Texans must pilgrimage to somewhere along their journey. A town with history, food, and outdoors. A town that is the true color of Texas. Green! Ooh, cactus. Ow! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Green Texas sits right in the middle of Austin and San Antonio and just outside of New Braunfels. It's so close, yet feels caught in a different era. Welcome to Green. And for the love of Texas, please don't call it Gruen. But this community was founded in the 1850s by German farmers and like all farming communities, it's had both boom years and bust years to the point of being almost completely abandoned. But those days are long gone as this charming little burg has so much going on. Let's just say it makes other towns green with envy. <laughs> you like that one? Green is a tourist town, plain and simple. In fact, it's not even really a town anymore as it's officially part of New Braunfels. The population is 20 people, give or take 20, and it covers a not so Texas sized 25 acres. But it's got more history than some towns a thousand times its size. The community was named after H.D. Green, a German businessman who owned the mill, mercantile, and basically everything else in town that existed to serve the German families in the area. But by the 1950s and into the 70s, the once thriving Berg had become a ghost town. And any story about what Green was then and what it is today must start in one place, Green Hall the oldest continually operating dance hall in Texas, a place that is as Texan as it gets, where we're gonna sit down by the stove with one of the two visionaries that revitalized this town, Mary Jane Nally. You know, you, you hear Green Hall, like, and it's got so much history, so it, it's iconic in Texas, and you look around, I mean, it's it's uh, just a wooden wooden dance hall with a you know potbelly stove right here. There's not really much that's changed, this has always been a dance hall, still is a dance hall. Okay, and the year it was built was 1878. When? 1878. It's older than dirt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much, right? For the first 100 years of its existence, Green Hall was just a place for locals together. A place to dance, have family reunions, and even vote in local elections. Was it thriving? No, but it was still standing. And then in 1974, Mary Jane and her business partner, Pat Moloch, walked in here and instantly knew this place was worth preserving. When he came here, he just saw this rawness about this place yeah. that he really loved, the whole ambiance. It's this, still here. It's still here. There's yeah. this feeling when you come in, and I get chills still here talking about it. I mean, it spoke to y'all, right? It did. I mean, it spoke to Pat very strongly. And did you ever envision it being what it is today? We kind of did, but not exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing that, that's important to remember is that we really didn't do much initially. Yeah, okay, people yeah. People just loved it the way it was. And literally the music. The music brought people here. Sure, it's yeah. The, it's been the core of the town the whole time, and it still is. Pat and Mary Jane bought Green Hall to preserve it and started booking better bands, including one young act from San Marcos named George Strait and the Ace in the Hole Band. And they, they were just one of the bands that we'd have once a month play here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I guess we got to fill the gap. All George <laughs> and the Ace in the Hole Band. Yeah. All right, that's fine. Yeah, that's so fine. for like three years, he played like once a month or twice a month. Yeah, and then it was just a combination of things. George got famous, then you know the next thing we know, somebody else is doing a commercial here, and then and and over the years, just things kept happening. And the list of acts who played Green Hall is a who's who of country music. Classics like Merle Haggard, alongside top billing youngsters like Casey Musgraves and Marin Morris. It's become sort of a rite of passage for Texan artists, no matter how big they are, 
to play Green Hall. You ain't played Green Hall yet, you ain't the real deal, you know? I love that. It's true though. Well, it's good to hear. Walk in here any day and you'll find a mix of tourists and locals basking in the feeling that only Green Hall can provide. This is what it's all about. I mean, yeah. you could not draw up or design a better Texas dance hall than this right here. Nope, it's pretty pretty perfect. Yeah. Yeah, see how, how smooth this floor is? <laughs> how old's this but, floor? I, I mean, don't know, it was here when we got here. How long have those tables been there? Um, since about 1981. Funny. They were built to be Joe Ely proof. When he played then, everybody stood on the tables. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was crazy. There's no place like Green Hall in Texas. No, there really isn't. That's cool. We might just be back here tonight for a show. Stay tuned on that. But Pat and Mary Jane were able to save Green piece by piece at a time when almost everyone else had abandoned it. And one of their major renovation feats is now a place where all of Texas can feast. I'm talking about the Gristmill River Restaurant. The Gristmill sits in a unique building that was once Green's actual gristmill, using the water of the nearby Guadalupe River to grind the community's grain into cornmeal and flour. Nowadays, all the cornmeal and flour in this place is being used to batter countless chicken fried steaks and onion rings. This is longtime manager and local Larry Abel. You see it now and you go, oh yeah, it was always gonna be this great entertainment district, but you know, to have the future vision back then, when you see nothing but a bunch of broke down, <laughs> dilapidated buildings, and you think, someday people are gonna eat chicken fried steak and onion rings in there. But look, it's this is a one of a kind sort it of is. place. We went slow and we've added on every you know few years, grew and we grew until we are today. Try to keep the same home feel, uh, everything from scratch every day, and good service, good food. Um, good ambiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ambiance is a, is a lot. Yeah. The textures in here are just incredible between the wood and the tin, the brick. I mean, you, you couldn't ever build something like no, this. No, people come in all the time and go, hey, we're going to take some pictures and we're going to rebuild this. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Try it yourself. See what yeah. you get. Let me know how it goes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, During the summer months, this place is packed. Half the folks dressed up for a nice family dinner, the other half rolling off the river in flip flops. During the winter, well, it's all about the roaring fireplaces and comfort cooking. And between the ribs, the fish, and the burgers, well, you cannot go wrong on the menu. But for me, well, I can't pass up their house specialty, chicken fried steak. Chicken fried steak, we've been voted, you know, best here, best there. We just use the same recipe we used in 1977. To me, the cream gravy on top hits the... Is there anything that's bad with cream gravy on it? I mean... No. Yeah, no, everything no. gets a little, a little better bit. with cream gravy. Yes, sir. I knew my order before I walked in. Just a little time for me to warm my own buns, and now it's time to eat. All right, here it is. Texas epitomized on a plate. Chicken fried steak, lots of cream gravy, mashed taters, and of course, green beans. See that? Green beans. Green. How do you spell that green? Well, yeah, G R U E N U E. U before E, except after G. E before U. <laughs> I can't remember the rule how it applies to green. Here we go. Woo, doggy, that's good. This right here, everything a perfect chicken fried steak should be. You got super tender meat, crispy crust, and then you got really rich, sort of buttery cream gravy. Oh man, that's good. You know, you ask people what the official dish of Texas is, most of the time they say chicken fried steak. It's gotta be. It's not, it's actually chili. But if there were a second one, I'm gonna make a nomination that it be chicken fried steak. I'm slopping cream gravy everywhere, have you noticed? <laughs> it's falling off the front. I'm a slob. And one of the best parts about this chicken fried steak, no gristle. They done uh, milled it all out. They milled it all out. Uh, I see what you did there. There's definitely something special about this dining room. You're sitting amongst all this old wood and this old building. You're looking out over the beautiful Guadalupe River. I can feel that fire warming up my back. You know, I don't think it scientifically flavors the food, but it tastes better in a dining room like this, no doubt. All right, now that my belly is full, it's time to hit the streets of green. And this entire town is nothing more than a few blocks of unique stores and restaurants. There are places to hear live music while you sip on some Texas wine, places to shop for everything from yard art to kids clothes, 
I'm not sure what I'm looking for today. And if that's you as well, well then the Green General Store is here to meet all your general needs. You know, I think my favorite thing about a general store is just the, uh, the general appeal of it. Something for everybody. You need some Texas armadillo poop mints? They got it. You need a book with nothing but cats and hats? They got it. You need a signed copy of the Texas Declaration of Independence? They got it. And I heard there's a treasure map on the back here somewhere. There it is! This right here one of the best sounds known to man. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> oh, that's Do I creepy. have any chicken fried steak left on my face? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ice cream. You know, I did need something to wash down that chicken fried steak. Hi, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing awesome. But I think my day would be more awesome with a Coke float. I can do that. All right. This is owner Kathy Schindler. And not only is she a mean soda jerk, she's also a bit of a historian. There you go. Thank you, thank You're you. You're welcome. You. So tell me about this general store. I mean, did it used to be a general store like 100 years ago or something? It did, it used to be a general store um, and it was a mercantile, it was developed I believe in 1878 by Henry Green. Okay, there's a charm here on this street in Green that you really don't find anywhere in Texas. No, it's true. And yeah. I've tried, I've gone to other places <laughs> to try them like, no, nope, it just doesn't have it. No, yeah, And yeah, it yeah, draws yeah. the people in. I mean, it's crazy. Kathy gets visitors from all over the globe who come here for a taste of the Lone Star State, which right now tastes a lot like Bluebell ice cream. As you can see, there are a lot of ways to spin some green in green, if you know what I mean. And me, well, you know, I'm always in the mood for a new hat. Looky here, Green Hat Company. This is owner Cody Courtney. Great to see you, thanks for coming in. Absolutely, man, I love your shop. Yeah. So, was this like the old bank? Appreciate it, yeah, this is the old bank. This is the bank vault here. It came down in 1890 from Cincinnati on a train. So we've got it in our shop now and it's not going anywhere. This entire shop is about the size of a bank vault, but it's packed with awesome hats. And today I'm thinking I need something very different from all my other lids. I like that hat a lot. Yeah, this is the Gus. This is the Robert Duval Gus that he wore in Lonesome Dove. That's a great hat right there. That's an iconic Texas hat. That might even be my size. Ooh. What this shop really specializes in is adding a little extra flair. And this includes shaping, even branding. I love that. Look at that. And finally, setting them on fire. <laughs> oh! That is rad. Make it look like you've been on a few cattle rides. <laughs> really is that a turkey that. feather? A turkey feather. I think that's that your hat, awesome. boss. That is my hat. Best part. Right there. I'm going to let this one cool off and save it for a future day trip. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Another must stop anytime I'm in green. Green Outfitters, a place that looks surprisingly similar to my closet. Oh my gosh, this is like my favorite shop already. It's all the things I already wear. <laughs> this is cool, lots of Texas companies in here. We got Howler, we got Texas Standard. I think this hat was made specifically for me. A face only mama could love. <laughs> so there's a lot of people who only think of green and the Guadalupe River in the summertime for the tubing, but there's a very good reason to come to green in the winter time. Let's head back here. Because behind the retail shop, you'll find the fly shop, filled to the gills with all the gear anyone needs to go fly fishing on the Guadalupe River. One of Texas's best kept fishing secrets. And this is shop owner, Tiffany Yates. All right, so I know nothing about fly fishing. I've, I've done it once, but I've never fly fished in the Guadalupe. Here it's mostly nymphing. Okay. Um, and so... I mean, I would have assumed it was. Right. You know? I mean, right. Like, <laughs> you're going to need to explain that one too. Okay. So it's the stages of the fly's life. Oh, all right. Okay. So a dry fly is when it's a real fly with wings and... Oh, yeah, yeah. This, but is, it, this is going to sound so stupid. This is called fly fishing because the bait looks like flies. Right. I thought it was something about the way the the rod it flew the the line. But that's like that's it's all the life cycle of a trout. fly. Yes, it's all the life cycle of a fly. How do you learn these things unless someone teaches you? 
And that's what Tiffany is here to do and to share her love for this sport. I mean, some of these hooks get uh, yes. minuscule tiny. Look at that. If you can actually see it, can you see that in my hand? The thing I most want to learn is what makes the Guadalupe so special. It's uh, the southernmost trout fishery in the U.S. Texas Parks and Wildlife stocks and Trout Unlimited stocks. Oh, wow. So it's, it's a pretty big How fishery. many fish do they put in that river every year? It could be 4,000 fish. Wow. Depending on how big they are. This is in incredible. So they take thousands of rainbow trout, mm -hmm. stick them in the river. And is it like just a frenzy for fly fishermen at it that time is, of year? It is, yeah. <laughs> People will be waiting for those trucks. Isn't that cheating just a little bit? <laughs> it like is cheating a little bit. Like casting at the bit. back of the truck? Yes. Yeah. Are you well, above that though, Chet? I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, she <laughs> might be. I'm definitely not. <laughs> and are these pretty fun to fight? Yes. Okay, Yeah. all right. Especially when it's cold. Lucky for us, it's very cold today. And Tiffany has agreed to take us out. Remember, all rivers in Texas are public, so as long as you find public access, you can wade and fish to your heart's content. I feel like a real Ready? fisherman. I did. <laughs> I am. I am. So it's going to be, you know, knee deep or so till halfway. And you can see that there are some channels, and that's where the fish are going to be. You're going to cast up, and then every now and then you're just going to flip that line so that it's a very natural float. Okay. It's not a tight line, okay? Oh, okay. Mend upstream, set the hook downstream because the fish is facing upstream. That'll get the hook back into it. Yes. Okay. Activate fishing glasses. It's always risky fishing for TV, but I got lots of faith in Tiffany. Not so much in me. Is that, that's a fish down there, isn't it? That yeah, white? Yeah, that's a palomino. Oh, okay, okay. Now it's time to flip it back upstream. There it is. First, first uh, flick. Already wrapped her up. It only took one, guys, only took one. And that doesn't mean one to catch a fish, it's one to twist the line up. Let's try that again. There you go. Okay, I'm in the line. So, oh, oh. Did you just have one? I did, okay, I did, and set I, set, I set the wrong way. Ah, you did. just told me this. There you go, that's a good hey, one. Hey, hey. This is really fun carefully timing my movements to put the hook right where I want it. Honestly, feels a little more like dancing than fishing. This is probably like the most peaceful fishing. You know, out on a lake, you're kind of getting beat by the wind a little bit, yeah. and then there's boats everywhere, and then you're trying to keep your boat on top. Yeah, it's nice just to be out here. For sure. And you get to see pretty birds and just, oh! Oh, I've got something. I've got something. Is it a fish or a rock? Oh, it feels a lot like a rock right now. Okay. <laughs> you can see the fish out there, and they're just being picky. Like my children this morning. Like, come on, eat the food, eat the food. It's about identifying where the fish are going to be, and then put your hook right there fingers cramping fishing is definitely a game of patience here's a bunch right here oh goodness got one yes way to go way to go <laughs> all right turn your rod to the left pull it tight reel it reel it reel it oh these guys are fun Oh, it's a great fish. Whoa, trick. that's a big rainbow trout. So, you know, you just want to keep them in the water as much as possible when you catch them here. That is a beautiful fish. Okay, she's loose. Wow. <laughs> Guadalupe River rainbow trout. All right, you can go on to bless somebody else's day trip. Beautiful. Oh, adios. Good job. <laughs> hey, thank you. This has been awesome. And I know it gets said a lot, but it's not about catching the fish, really. It's about being out here, having a, a moment, just breathing in God's beautiful green earth and uh, appreciating this wonderful world that we live in.
I mean, I'd also like to catch fish, <laughs> but. <laughs> so every time I come to green, I'm reminded of how small green actually is. It's, it's pretty, pretty small. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just like a few blocks, not even city blocks. It's like a few lots. It's like a corner. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this corner smushed up between a river and a dance hall. When you started talking, we were entering the town. Now we're halfway out of the town. That's, <laughs> I'm just saying. That's, that's kind of true. But it's amazing that in such a small area, there is so much to do. And those trout might not have been very hungry, but I certainly am. And we got just enough time to grab some food before tonight's show. Uh, what are you doing there? I'm moseying in. <laughs> Welcome to Mosey's. It's a restaurant that got squeezed into the side of a 120-year-old building. And you'll definitely have to mosey through the customers to find a table, but it will be worth it. Their tagline is sliders, dogs, and whiskey. But I think we're going to start with last things first. Oh, what do we have here? This is our rosemary maple bourbon sour. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, good. That is really good. This is the COO of Pat and Mary Jane's team, Ryan Weinbrand. And craft cocktails are part of the experience here, as is the feeling that you've stepped back in time. This used to be an old sales extension of the Green Antique Company. The bar was a custom piece. We had a, a gentleman come in by himself. One guy built this. That's cool. He said, make it look 100 years old. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so it creates this like shotgun old saloon feel yeah, as you exactly. walk in. Now for the other two cornerstones of Mosey's, sliders and dogs. Why stick with the smaller burgers? What was the, what was the thought there? Well, because it went good with a cold beer or a cocktail, or one in each hand. <laughs> you know, oh, okay. You, know, you don't want to be too big, you, yeah, you, you lose, right. lose your drink. <laughs> so what makes the hot dog special? I mean, we can all make hot dogs in our kitchen, but you guys have sort of a yeah. little signature dog. You can't give away all the tricks oh, of the okay. trade, okay, sure. but a splash of soy sauce. Gives it a crispiness, great flavor, jalapeno mustard right on top with our uh, house-made sauerkraut. Well, I might as well try them all. All right, now this is what you mosey in for, right here. Sliders, dogs, and whiskey. And no, I did not order for myself. <laughs> Someone else was like, yeah, 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 Chet needs that too. Yeah, and Chet needs that too. Ooh, ooh. That's a good dog right there. You call something jalapeno mustard in Texas, it better bring some heat. My friends, that's got a good burn on it. With sauerkraut and pickles, it's a bold move right there, but it is working for me. I don't know whether to finish the dog or move to the sliders. Yeah, I mean, you gotta eat all three. Uh, yeah, that's true. They're all connected, so technically it's one cheeseburger. <laughs> oh, dude. Lots of cheese, lots of mayonnaise, no veggies, <laughs> and it's good. That right there is a cheeseburger in its purest form. It called them skinny fries on the menu, and it made me a little bit worried. Like, I don't know if I want to have anything to do with skinny fries, but then I realized it's the actual shape of the fry. So, whew, that was a close one. I mean, you wear skinny jeans, skinny fries. Shut your face. They, they, they go together. Shut your face. <laughs> Well, friends, the sun is going down, which means it's time for the hall to start firing things up. Tonight, we're headed to a sold-out show of one of my favorite bands. Hailing from Magnolia, Texas, it's Jamestown Revival. From the blues of the Guadalupe River, to the golden browns of delicious chicken fried goodness. And from the iconic white facade of the hall to all the shades in between, this, my friends, is the true color green. Whew, man. So I will see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Okay, you gotta go catch the rest of the show. <laughs> Haven't seen
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.